Greetings, chem students, wherever you may be. This is Mr. Braun, and today we're going to talk about the entrance slip, naming ionic compounds number one. Now, as always, I want you to make corrections on your own entrance slip in a different color than what you used to answer it. So if you use pencil, just take out a pen so I can distinctly see what corrections you made. All right, let's get started. Here we go with the very first one, lead four perchlorate. Now that Roman numeral four in there, that is the stock system, okay? I look at that and say, okay, I am dealing with lead four plus. So I am going to write down my ion, P, B, four plus. Now I need to find out what this guy perchlorate is, okay? I can see that I have an A-T-E ending there. So that leads me to think, oh, this is a polyatomic ion, okay? Most polyatomics end in A-T-E or I-T-E. So as I'm looking, on my polyatomic ion list, my pal, I find por perchlorate being ClO4 1 minus. Now, the key to this, ladies and gentlemen, the key to this is my charges have to be equal to zero. Obviously, this is not the case because plus four, minus one, I still have plus three left. So what I am going to need to do is I am going to need to have four, four of these guys to give me a minus four charge. So when I write out my lead per four perchlorate, I go PB and I need parentheses because it tells me that of these chlorates, I have four of them. Of the chlorates, I have four of them. Now, what are some common things that I see wrong with this? Well, one of the big ones is people don't put parentheses. So they put CLO4 and they say four of them, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, to me, that looks like I have 44 oxygens, which is not the case. Okay, not the case. So we definitely need parentheses there. Another thing I commonly see wrong, people don't use subscripts, they use superscripts. All right, superscripts are where we put charges, ladies and gentlemen. They're not where we put how many of the compound or of the ion we have. So right here, Final answer, PB, parentheses, CL4, or ClO4, close the parentheses, and I have four of them. This makes my net charge equal to zero. Moving on to our second one, lithium selenide. Okay, I know lithium. I look at my periodic table, I can see lithium is an alkali metal. So lithium is going to want to lose one electron because it has one electron on the second energy level. So that lithium will dump that electron to become a plus charge, a cation. Selenide, I see this IDE ending. When I see IDE endings, I immediately am thinking this is probably monoatomic because there's only a few IDE ending polyatomic ions. There are a couple, but there are only a few. So I look at this and I say selenide, okay? That IDE ending is usually replacing something, okay? So I am now going to look for sel selenide, okay? Selenium, I'm sorry. Selenium, S-E-L-E-N-I-U-M. 
So as I'm looking at selenium on my periodic table, okay, I'm looking at selenium on my periodic table, I see he's in the oxygen family. Well, I know that oxygen wants to gain two electrons, so being in the same family, he's going to act the same way. So selenium is going to want to gain two electrons also. Let me get that word out of there now. So I have lithium a 1 plus, selenium a 2 minus. Once again, I have to equal zero. What I usually like to do on these folks is find my least common multiple. Okay, a little math term for you there. My least common multiple on this one is two. So I look and I say, okay, lithium's got to be two. So I need two lithiums. Okay, selenide's already at two. So there I have lithium selenide. Okay, lithium selenide. Net charge equal to zero. My third one here, folks, once again, I see a Roman numeral there, so I'm thinking stock system, gallium 3 phosphate. So I look at gallium on my periodic table. It is GA. And right here, my Roman numeral tells me my charge is going to be 3 plus for gallium. All right. I look at the gallium 3 plus there. I see phosphate here once again, an ATE ending leads me to think I am dealing with a polyatomic ion. So I look at PAL. I look at my PAL list, and I'm looking for phosphate. Phosphate. Uh, got him. Got him in the minus threes. Phosphate is PO4, three minus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I like to do with this I forgot to do this on the first one. When I get a polyatomic, I like to put a box around it as so. That tells me that when I'm writing the formula, I better have PO4. Because if I don't, I've changed it from phosphate. So I have this phosphate. I have gallium. I look. They have to equal zero. The sum of my charges. Whoa! The sum of my charges are zero. What do I do? Well, real easy. I write gallium. I write phosphate. And I am done. Now, a common error, folks, a common error I see with this is people put parentheses here. Do I have more than one phosphate? No, I do not. So I do not need parentheses. So let me get that out of there. Once again, do my PO4. Net charge is equal to zero. Final answer. Our next one, chromium-3 nitrate. Once again, we got one of those Roman numerals. So I've got a stock system, Roman numeral, telling me that chromium is multivalent, meaning it can take more than one charge. Chromium is Cr on our periodic table. So chromium tells me right here I have 3 plus chromium. As I'm viewing again, once again I see this ATE, so I'm thinking polyatomic, pal, my polyatomic ion list. Nitrate, where is this guy at? There he is. And O3. Once again, okay, I put a square around it, meaning I cannot change that NO3. I better have, in my final answer, NO3, or I don't have nitrate. Now, looking, looking at this, I don't have my charges equal to zero because I have a three plus and I have a one minus. So, what I need to do, my least common multiple is three. So I'm going to take everything to 3. So I'm going to times that nitrate by 3 to get chromium. I have more than 1, so I do need parentheses. 
There's my nitrate. I put it in a box so I didn't change it. There's my nitrate. Well, how many of those nitrates do I need? I need three of those guys. So if I have three nitrates, each one of the three are of minus one charge. That gives me a minus three total, plus three for the chromium. Net charge, zero. Final answer. Now we got one more. We got one more to work. Here we go. Zinc sulfate. Our good buddy, zinc. Now, zinc does not, I don't see a Roman numeral there. Okay. And let me tell you, I can give you some hints here, folks, that we probably already talked about, but I don't remember. I look on my periodic table and I find zinc, element number 30, and he has an oxidation state of only two. Okay. Well, that tells me, folks, that zinc is going to be a two plus charge. That's the only oxidation number he has, so he's going to be a two plus. Sulfate right here, sulfate, A-T-E, PAL, polyatomic ion. All right, I'm looking at sulfate. I know sulfate is SO4, 2 minus, because I found it right here on my ion sheet. Okay, my PAL. Once again, when I deal with polyatomics, I put that box around them so I know I can't change them. I need to get my net charge equal to zero. Well, I take a peek of this and I see a two plus. I see a two minus. Those are already equal to zero. So, all I need to do is write zinc, put my sulfate on there, and I'm good to go. Now remember, remember, when I only have one, when I only have one of the polyatomic, I do not need to have parentheses. I hope you did good. This is Mr. Braun. This has been our entrance slip over naming ionic compounds number one. Have a great day, chem students.